Greetings one and all, this is Lloyd Brown and welcome social media family to my vlog. I needed to put this um, episode in and I don't even know where in the lineup I'm going to put it in but it's important that I put it in because after I've recorded all of the episodes so far there was one glaring omission that I haven't included and this is the omission that needs to be included. So bear with me. Now, there was another element of trauma that I had experienced, which contributes to who I am, who I was, and where I need to be. And it was losing my mother. After I had the hits with um, Share in the Night and Love You Down and was on the road with Black Heroes, um, my presence in the reggae fraternity was such of standard that I was being nominated for awards. And the late Tony Williams, who had um, spearheaded the British... British Reggae Industry Awards um, organization had nominated me for how many awards? Okay, um, I was nominated for Best British Single, which I had won with Share of the Night. Uh, and I had won, I was nominated for Best British Male Newcomer, which was April 1991. And I was nominated for Best British 12-inch single, which was Love You Down. So those were the awards that I basically won within the late Tony Williams British Reggae Industry Awards organisation. In between that time, I was touring with Black Heroes. And before we was due to undergo a tour in Jamaica, my mum had developed breast cancer and after knowing that fact I decided that I didn't want to go on tour with Black Heroes. My mother basically forced me to go. She told me go. I will have the operation and it will be sorted. I went to Jamaica because it was important for me to go to Jamaica as an artist, as an entertainer, because I vowed that I would never go back to Jamaica as a tourist ever again. So I went as an entertainer, thinking that I would be accepted and respected as that at the very least, to which I was. I was, I was respected as such. And even though I had a great time over there at that time, my mind was still on my mother. When I came back from Jamaica, um, my mother had the operation. She had the mastectomy. And um, I was... I was nominated for the best British 12 inch single at that time. And that was April, 1992. Yeah, April, 1992. So, um, before the award ceremony took place, my mum fell ill. Well, she didn't fell ill. Let me rewind. This was like two years after we went to Jamaica, okay? The award ceremony happened in 1992. During that time, my mum was at work, working in a Jewish old people's home in Tottenham. While she was doing her rounds, she slipped on a piece of carrot which was on the floor and she went to hospital. 
when she went to hospital and she was checked out x-rays and stuff it was diagnosed that the cancer had spread all over her body I was notified of the fact and I was asked to come to the hospital soon I don't drive I don't have a car I don't have transport so I got Sebastian who was a cast member to take me down to the hospital when I went to the hospital I saw my mum in bed and the doctor was literally on the other side of the bed telling me not only has the cancer ravaged her body but she doesn't have long and he told me this in front of her and I think the only way that could have taken place was if my mum allowed him to do so And I remembered after him telling me, it just looked so matter of fact that he told me in the way he told me. Deep down, I wanted to punch him in his mouth. But I said, mom, I'll be right back. And I went outside the hospital, it was North Middlesex Hospital. And I just fell on my knees and I prayed and I asked God, I asked God, God, please, 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 please give my mum more time. 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 Please let her live, let her live, let her live. But it was her time. And I watched my mum deteriorate in a way that I will never forget because at that point she wasn't eating solids. She literally could only get, you could only get a syringe of morphine and put it in her mouth and inject the morphine in her mouth. And it got to the point where my mum didn't even want that. And I also remember that I wrote a song called A Mother's Prayer and I sang it to her. And Whilst all this was going on, I called my exes to let them know that my mother was dying. And they didn't believe me. They thought I was basically making up a story to gain sympathy from them. That's how superficial they were. They really thought I was lying. And I had to get my brother to convince them that that wasn't the case. And when they went to the hospital and saw my mum, they just broke down crying. They broke down crying. One of them couldn't stay anymore. My daughter, my eldest daughter couldn't stay. My youngest daughter's mother came And to her credit, she stayed with me. She stayed with me until, until my mum died. The following day, I think it was around five o'clock. And that more or less finished me. I don't know what it's like for some people when they have a bereavement like that, but I can only describe it as the environment that you're in, it's like it's, it's in ultra slow motion. But outside of that situation, outside of that environment, everything's going eight times as fast, like time lapse. That's how I felt at that point. I don't know how I forgot that, but... I need people to know about that too because that was a major part of my life that was gone as well 
whilst I was still trying to counterbalance my regular life with my public life. So, how many minutes is that? I can't even see. But, um, but yeah, that was, that was a scenario that broke me absolutely devastated me so up to that point I had lost my dad when I was 19 and lost my mother when I was 29 so I lost my parents relatively young relatively young and my family life was going down the shithole so that was another trauma that I had experienced. So it's with that, I'm going to bid you guys adieu for now. And as always, you don't know the coup, please, whatever you do, abstain from foolishness, even if it's your own. Confront it, deal with it, push it one side, move it the hell on, live on, live up. And until I catch you on the next one, people stay blessed. Magan.